Well, here's the thing about the Riemann zeta function. Um, it, in the research I'm doing, actually, the Riemann zeta function in integers is not known to be irrational. So it, zeta of 2, it's known to be irrational. That's the freedom spatial problem. Zeta 4, zeta 6, at all even integers, it's known to be irrational. But at odd integers, we've only seen that zeta 3 is irrational in a very recent development, only about 50 years ago, by uh, Professor Roger Oppen. But we still don't know if zeta, the zeta function at odd integers takes on an irrational value. So one of the techniques that a lot of people have tried to use to attack it is coming up with continued fractions of the zeta function. Uh, most of them have been unsuccessful so far because the continued fractions we can get are so convoluted and converge so slowly that other methods seem to be faster, including infinite sums and power series. But maybe one day we'll see the return of the continued fractions being able to provide us some knowledge of the irrationality measure of the zeta function. And of course, if we know that it's greater than or equal to 2, that's automatically a proof that the zeta function is irrational. Another open question is if zeta 3 is transcendental, which we already know it's irrational. And through uh, what I just showed, through Google's theorem, if you can show that, I mean, through this way, that it does not have a finite irrationality measure, through its continued fraction or some other method, then you can instantly show it's transcendental. So there are a lot of ways in which this is related to the Riemann zeta function, which is specifically an analytic number theory topic. But hopefully I can talk about that more next time.